going on YouTube welcome back or if you're new here my name is Timur I am a Boeing 737 captain big all-time aviator and a huge fan of DCS world now in today's episode we're going to be recreating two crashes that happened in real life at air shows and they're actually both almost identical uh, two completely different airplanes they're separated by around about 20 years or so uh, one is the 1989 crash at Le Bourget uh, of a MiG-29. The second one is a CF-18, a Canadian Hornet uh, in, I think it's Lethbridge. Uh, both cases, extremely similar. Um, I mean, they're both high alpha passes, so aircraft are going in uh, very, very, very low speed um, next to the crowd line, fairly low altitude. Uh, they both suffer engine failures uh, in that very critical phase of flight. Um, both cases they crash which we'll have a look at here in a second uh, both cases pilots eject last moment and survive um, and you might be asking like why are we doing this in DCS I mean we should have a look at it just to see because I'm, I'm just curious I'm curious how well a simulation candles something like this I mean is it gonna look like really really similar without further ado uh, let's have a look uh, first of all we will start with start with the MiG-29 <clears throat> uh, so MiG-29 1989 Le Bourget uh, it's piloted by a very well-known Russian test pilot called Anatoly Kvochor. Uh, basically, he's doing his high alpha pass here as an engine failure. Let's have a look. Play the tape. Давайте сделаем это и мы. Обратите внимание на выброс пламени из сопла правого двигателя. Происходит. All right, so you saw there a little flame coming out the back. I mean, that was some sort of engine seizure potentially. Uh, Anyway, engine's dead. So it's going to increase the thrust on one engine, see if we can get out. Бомпаж. Двигатель встал. Самолет начинает разворачиваться и крениться на правое крыло. Высота около 180 метров. So he's saying the height is about 180 meters. That's, uh, what is that? That's around 600 feet? It's 590 feet. Стремительно растет. Самолет почти отвесно пикирует к земле. К вочеру ясно. Машину не спасти. Reject. So he ejects. Ejects at 300 feet. I mean, as you saw there, the it's great that he managed to eject. Uh, but apparently, what saved him is actually the the blast, the explosion. Um, really softened his his landing there. I mean, he survived. He was fine. He was back flying. Uh, so that's the MiG-29 crash. Uh, now let's have a look at the F-18 crash in Lethbridge in Canada. So they're actually playing uh, Staying Alive is the track uh, through the speakers going on here whilst he's doing his air show. So he's coming in for his high alpha pass. There you go. You can see something went wrong with uh, the right engine. Eject safely, his parachute opens, he's all fine, he's all good. Uh, so, almost identical crashes, almost 20 years apart. They're both 4 Gen fighters, they're both quite similar in a way, the layout of the, the, the aircraft. We've got a F-18, MiG-29, they're both uh, twin engine, they're both twin tail. Um, they're both thrust to weight ratio of basically 1 to 1 over 1 to 1 when they are light. Uh, and in both cases, these aircraft are clean. Uh, they've got no pylons, they've got no external fuel tanks, they've got no weapons. Also uh, important to mention that the F-18 and the MiG-29, there is one critical difference between them. The F-18 is a longitudinally statically unstable aircraft uh, and it uses a flight control system. So it's basically full fly-by-wire. Uh, the MiG-29 that we have here, the 912 and the 913, um, and also the MiG that was in that video in the crash in 1989. That actually isn't a fly-by-wire airplane. That is actually a longitudinally statically stable aircraft. Um, and it uses, you know, hydraulics and a bunch of 
boosters and cables. I want to say that I'm not the authority on any of these airplanes. Um, I'm just, you know, some guy that flies big jets for a living um, and just, you know, loves, uh, you know, DCS world and aerobatics and that kind of stuff. Normally jets like this don't do high alpha passes as they're, you know, one of the first maneuvers when they do the performance is usually somewhere around in the middle or, or closer to the end. So there's a very high chance that um, they had a very light fuel load. I actually don't think it's a lack of thrust that resulted in both cases in a crash. What actually happened was you saw both aircraft, I mean, they actually both lost what seemed like the right engine. So when you lose those two engines side by side, when you lose the right engine, uh, you're now creating a moment with the thrust line of that second engine, which basically you know, pushes the aircraft over to one side. Now, obviously, you can use rudder to counteract that. Um, but the problem uh, then becomes is that I think because these are high alpha passes, they're going very slowly. I would imagine anywhere between 80 to 100 knots for a fighter. Um, they're basically below their minimum control speed uh, for a single engine, uh, which basically means there's not enough rudder authority to counteract the moment created by the thrust on the other engine. Now, the pilot in that situation, well, he he's kind of stuck because, yeah, he can take the thrust off the other engine and you're not gonna have this yawing moment that's gonna, you know, potentially put you in the ground. But the problem is then, obviously, you don't have enough thrust to fly away. The other important factors here is obviously, you know, the meteorological conditions. So like the temperature, the elevation of the fields, um, maybe the humidity and stuff like that, right? We obviously can't recreate everything exactly the way this was in DCS. Uh, one important thing to note is this crash in Lethbridge, the elevation of Lethbridge is around about 3,000 feet off of uh, sea level, right? Uh, so it's it's kind of high. It's, it's not really high, but it's definitely, there's definitely a difference between zero and 3,000 feet um, for an airplane, all right, in terms of performance. So we're going to try both jets. We're going to try both the MiG-29 and the F-18. Um, and we're gonna see, you know, if this uh, this scenario happens. All right, so here we are in DCS. We fired up the MiG-29 first. This is 912 or the MiG-29A. Pretty sure that's what Quatcher would have been flying at Le Bourget. Uh, we've got 60% fuel. We are at an elevation of about 100 feet uh, over here at Malminad, Alminad Air Force Base in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, it's 20 degrees, it's standard eyes a day, so it's uh, 1013 hectopascals or 2992 inches of mercury if you are American. Uh, so yeah, let's give this a shot. Um, I don't know exactly the speed that Quattro was flying, but for my testing I know the MiG-29 uh, seems like 220 kilometers an hour, seems to be roughly where the limit is for its high alpha, low speed, um, maintaining you know, level flight. So we need to get established over the field at 220 kilometers an hour, 200 meters, maintaining level flight on the VSI showing zero, no climb, no descent. Uh, and when that happens, we'll kill the right engine and we'll see if we can get out of it or, you know, what happens, don't know, no idea. Let's set ourselves up here, kill the thrust, come round, complete all that speed off. All right, air brakes coming out. Lead that speed off. It's going to be quite difficult to see with those clouds. 17, Okay, that's good, right? Let's start leveling off there. Decrease thrust a little bit. There we go. We're at zero VSI. 210. Okay, that looks pretty much like where we need to be. Okay. Right engine dead. Come on. Right engine dead. There we go. Okay, go full thrust left engine. Whoa! Come on. Come on. Get rid of that thrust we won't use afterburner now. Yeah, and uh, we recover. Okay. Alright, just to be sure, let's try that a second time. Alright, here comes... 170, let's get a little bit higher, 180, good, decrease thrust, get the VSI to zero, speed 220, good, 200, good, all right, let's kill the engine, right engine's dead, aircraft's yawing, all right, let's recover, 
I push forward. I go max thrust. Left engine. Oh! We landed! Sweet! Oh. Almost. I don't think the yawing moment was big enough. It was I had enough rudder authority, but the first thing I did was I didn't go full thrust on that left engine. Um, I went full military. So maybe... Maybe that helped. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, either way, let's have a look at the uh, replay. Right, here we go. So you should see the right engine getting shut down any second. Okay, right engine's dead. So we've got that yawing moment. But then this is where we unload the wing. We go full thrust, left engine. Oh, I mean, that was unlucky. That was unlucky. Oh dear. Yeah, so, f I mean, looking at that, it seemed like DCS didn't really model the yawing moment all that well with uh, full thrust on the left engine. Uh, but then on the other hand, maybe I already unloaded the wing and gained just enough airspeed to bring it back. Either way, something tells me real life would be a little more tricky. All right, so here we are with the Royal Canadian Air Force demo jet Hornet, 60% uh, fuel again. Uh, now numbers we're looking for, I think we'll be aiming for about between 90 and 100 knots. Now, interestingly enough, the distance between the two engines here in the F-18, they're much narrower uh, together compared to the MiG-29, which means actually the moment created by the live engine uh, shouldn't be as great technically as the MiG-29, which they're a little bit further apart. So if I had to take my chances, I would probably go for the F-18 just by looking at that. Um, and I mean, they're so close to the center line, you'd really think that, you know, if one goes, if one is dead, there shouldn't really be that much of a momentum to, you know, really turn the aircraft, uh, you know, your aircraft into the ground. So, don't know. Now, the VSI in this airplane, well, we've got uh, the number over here is currently showing minus 750, so we're going to try and get that as close to zero as we can. Uh, the radio altimeter, which is currently set to barrel, but we'll change that in a second. Um, we'll try and aim for around 600 feet. I think that's pretty realistic. I think that's pretty much what the MiG-29 was at. Beeping us, beeping at us, saying we're high alpha now. Yeah, that's fine. All right, a little low here, so let's get up there. So there is 575, 85, 90. Good, unload a little bit. Right, speed's bleeding off now. No, be a size a little bit. There we go, back to zero. 100 knots, 110. Right, keep it 600 if we can. Nope, rate of descent's a little high there. Back to 590. There we go, 99 knots, good. Okay, 96, good. 580, okay, that's looking pretty good. 93 knots, almost full mill thrust here just to maintain this. 570 feet, okay, let's kill the right engine. Right engine's dead. Yawing moment, okay. Full left rudder, full thrust on the left engine. Unload the wing. Pull, 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 pull. Oh, I mean, that was close. That was close. I reckon we should go for take two. Uh, but again, full thrust, unload the wing, full thrust left engine. And it just seems like there's enough rudder authority. I mean, maybe it's just gonna I unload the wing before I apply full thrust. Just for, just to see what happens, I will go full thrust as soon as we kill the right engine. Um, instead of going full mail, instead of unloading the wing first and then going with thrust, which is what I would do instinctively because I kind of know I'm going to have this yawing problem. Um, let's just try it. 580, 590, get 600 unload. Okay, don't let the VSI decrease too much now. Keep it there, keep it there, keep it there. Don't get too low there now. So the Hornet's pretty difficult to keep the hide in. Right, 95 knots, good. 600 feet. We're almost at full mill power here to maintain this now. Don't climb now. Decrease slightly. The speed's dropping now, so gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. More thrust, good. 600. 90. Yeah, this is... I mean, it's close enough. It's close enough. Alright. 
600. Alright, right engine dead. There we go. It's the only moment. Full thrust left engine. Full left rudder. I think we're gonna make it this this time. I think we will. Come on, come on, come on. Whee! <laughs> Check gear, yes, thank you. I don't have time to put the gear down here, for God's sake. Let's just see uh, if we fly like super, super slow uh, on one engine. Is there gonna be a point? I've got full left rudder, by the way, if you're interested. So, is there gonna be a point where it's just gonna tip over? That's, that's what I wanna know. So, like, at what point is it just gonna start tipping over? <laughs> Okay, so it's it's going right, it's going right. Okay, full thrust now. Full left aileron, full left rudder. Okay, so we didn't unload the wing. Okay, so what I did in that one, I did not unload the wing. So I did not push forward, I didn't try and get the airspeed. I literally went minimum speed uh, to the point of where rudder authority was lost. It, it, that probably looked like the closest to what we've seen with both of those airshow crashes. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the um, the track. I mean, that's looking that's looking beautiful right there. Look at that. Okay, here we go. Right engine's dead. So the initial moment seems correct, but I unload the wing. Full thrust left engine. Watch this. <laughs> That's what you call skills, my friend. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that. That's how you recover. <laughs> oh my god, that is awesome. Uh, yeah. So yeah, now we recover. Everything's fine. And this is where we do the little experiment, so let's just fast forward to that. Alright, so this is where I do that little experiment where I basically... Wait, what's the speed here? 80. This is probably slower than what they were doing. So now look, I've got... I'm basically full backstick. So yeah, I was wrong. I was. It looks like I was full backstick. Uh, it looks like I was full backstick and full left as well, which is just not good. Um, and I mean, this looked very similar all right so just before we wrap this up um let's have a look let's have a very quick look at uh the flight control surfaces deflection on this f-18 uh let's have a look so yeah you see there the the, the elevators at the back they're nowhere near as much as deflected as they are in what you know i had in that scenario where i crashed in the f-18 the flight control system in the f-18 may just not deflect the elevators as much um as it does in dcs world so i don't know if it's like modeled exactly with the deflection of the control surfaces um you know because given these conditions i mean maybe it just won't let you you know um give you any more authority um i don't know uh, but it is plausible that it would, and it is plausible he's actually keeping it kind of neutral, he's not actually pulling back. Either way, I think uh, DCS World doesn't quite, I don't I don't feel the dynamics were quite as realistic as they should be. I, just, well, I was just curious to see what DCS World was like. If you would like for me to recreate something else, or to have a look at another real life scenario and see if we can replicate that in DCS if we have the right aircraft or, or something similar to do it with, uh, then by all means write that down in the comments below and I will be more than happy to check that out and hopefully, you know, I'll catch you in the next one. And also please consider subscribing and smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm gods. Thank you. Three versus normal. 74 percent. What a way to start. And enough. Alright, any last word? What are you doing? What? <laughs> Let's try that one more time.